All right, so a while ago, I actually upgraded this speaker right here that's in front of me. I put in a motorcycle 12 volt battery, Bluetooth chip, upgraded speaker, couple minor accessories, such as uh, two USB outputs so I could charge phones, a dial indicator, a quick charge input, and a couple of other minor aesthetic things that, uh, quite frankly, added to the experience of making my own speaker. Now, while this thing aesthetically is awesome, I love how it came out, there's a couple of drawbacks that I've realized or I've come to realize after having this thing for about a year. Number one, the plastic is super brittle. I realized that as soon as I made it. The screws that hold the two cases together are uh, non-existent. The actual threads that were in the plastic came apart almost immediately. So that's why I had to put this duct tape here as well as epoxy, hot glue, a lot of stuff. Now, keep in mind that it actually did hold it together for almost a year, but there's a couple of other things that I do not like about it. Number one being the sound. Uh, the Bluetooth chip that I put in actually has two outputs, a left and a right speaker. Since I only had room for one speaker, I had to put it on mono and had to put one speaker. And since the diameter of the speaker was only about four or three inches, I think, if I recollect correctly, that means it doesn't have a lot of low end, which is a problem because I like low end. I like having that range. The speaker, don't get me wrong, is amazing. It sounds awesome, but it does crackle when you put it more than 40% volume. Another issue that I had was that since the plastic is from the 80s, the plastic is very brittle meaning that I had to be very, very careful when handling it, when moving it, etc. So that is kind of a kind of a downside. Again, the aesthetics of it is amazing. The durability of it, not so much. And you're probably thinking to yourself, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna upgrade it? Well, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to scrap the actual radio. It's not good anymore. I have another idea that's a little bit more durable, not as aesthetically cool as this one, but I could throw it around and it's not going to be an issue. So last week I went to my local flea market and I picked up an ammo box and I picked up two 5 inch 60 watt speakers. These things have an incredibly strong magnet, so that means that it's going to give me quite a bit of bass. But almost immediately after buying the two separately, might I add, I realized one big issue. The speakers are too big for the ammo box. So I just got a bigger box. This used to carry some sort of saw, and as you can see here compared to the old radio, it's pretty big. Uh, obviously the first thing I gotta do is lay out the speakers of where I'm gonna put it. And just for size comparison, that is the old battery. Well, I say old, I'm still gonna use it. I'm gonna upgrade soon. And I would love to say that I had a easy going time cutting these holes out. Uh, but these diameters with that saw, it just was not happening. And as you can see here, the cuts were pretty rugged, but there was no, um, the, the whole hole was covered by the speaker, so I, I can't really complain. Anyways, the next step is to take out all the cabling from the old radio, which hurt because I put so much time and energy into that. And once I got that out, the next thing is to make all the holes for the dial indicator, USB charger, the switch, the charger, um, charger input, I mean, and obviously the uh, volume control and the holes that I'm doing here are for the subwoofers because the speakers are bigger now that's going to be producing quite a bit of positive and negative pressure and I don't want it to sound bad. And as you can see here, I'm actually going to be laying everything out on a piece of wood for a couple of reasons. One, to make it easier to lay everything out. Two, I could take out everything in one hit and I don't have to dig my hands in the box if I ever want to upgrade something. And I know, I know a lot of people are going to say, it's, oh, why are you using plumber's tape to hold it down? Because it works. All right, whatever. Anyways, once that's all in there, um, obviously put everything in, wire everything in, make sure it's all looking nice and pretty. And the first sticker I got to put on is the no request stickers, because obviously, as many of you may or may not know, I, I don't take requests if unless they're good. So, yeah, I'm going to slap that sticker on and inevitably I will sticker bomb this whole box to make it look a little bit more appealing. But for now, that's what I'm going to do. And as you can see here, I'm actually mounting the uh, controller with a piece of scrap wood to kind of reinforce the front end of it, too, because with all those holes, uh, the structural rigidity of it is just not there. 
once I got the battery in, I'm going to do a little test, make sure everything turns on, nothing is smoking. And the next thing I got to do is take care of these uh, very sharp edges on the subwoofer holes. So for this, I'm going to go inside, measure, use my uh, handy dandy engineering notebook and 3D print something up. Make sure that it covers the edges and also, you know, makes it a little bit cooler, I guess. But anyways, I'm going to need two of these, so a little matter control magic, and I make two of them. Slap it into the uh, 3D printer, let it do its thing. While it's doing that, I'm actually going to be designing another piece that's going to go around the edge of where the volume uh, controls are right there, because as you can see, it's very uh, sharp. And since I'm going to be putting my fingers around there a lot to control the volume, bass, and treble, I don't want to cut myself. So I'm going to actually adhere it with uh, epoxy, two parts epoxy, uh, because it's really strong and makes a good seal, I guess. doesn't really need it, but yeah. Anyways, once that's in, just got to play the waiting game, make sure that it properly adheres before I start messing with it. And once that's on, the last thing I got to do is slap on the speaker covers because I don't want to puncture these things, not with all the work that I've just done to it. So we went from this plain old toolbox to this, a toolbox with two 50 watt speakers, a lot of power. Next thing we got to do is test it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.